Welcome back. A shocking new study this morning says that nearly half of all cancer deaths may be preventable by decisions we make every day, according to the American Cancer Society. Researchers found that lifestyle choices like cigarette smoking, alcohol intake, diet, were connected to the cases of cancer. Joining us this morning is Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky, or as we like to call him, Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, good to see you. This is a very important story and a very important study. Do you buy it? I am so excited we're talking about prevention. Yeah. Prevention is key when talking about cancer. We always get excited when there are cures, but there's a way we can prevent 50% of cancers just by changing some of our lifestyle habits. Now, a study was done similar to this in 1981, and they thought that it was 70% of cases were preventable. But now with the decreases in smoking, people eating slightly healthier, th that has changed to now about 42 to 48%. Here's what I say. If you can take control of your health, cut your weight, stop smoking, control your alcohol intake, you're cutting your risk of cancer by such a huge percentage, and that starts with taking control of your life, step one. But I think that if you look at it the other way, 50% of people who get cancer have no control over it. And I think that that is unnerving to a lot of people, whether it's um, the rising rate of women who never smoked who are getting lung cancer, whether it's glioblastoma, for example, and it just comes out of nowhere and you've got a death sentence. I think you, you, people who are, get lung cancer, they're told, oh, well, it, you got it from environmental factors. No. Yes. And you're like, what does that mean? What, what am I coming into contact with other than asbestos that's given me non-small cell lung cancer? You're, you're totally right. In 50% in of these cases, the answer from a doctor is we don't know why this cancer occurred. For those people, that's where all of the breakthroughs in cancer treatments and cures need to come about. Right now, we're having some amazing progress with immunotherapy to actually get your immune system to fight off cancer cells. And that's where the most exciting progress is being made. Now we're getting some vaccines that might prevent cancers from happening in the first place. But in order to get any of this to happen, you need to go see your doctor. So have that conversation with your doctor. Find out what you could be doing that's putting you at risk. Find out if you might already have a cancer because early detection here is key. So you're, the, the, the smoking thing, obviously, that's uh, science, everyone gets it. Yep. They're also saying less drinking, less eating. You realize tomorrow is Thanksgiving. <laughs> like people's families are coming to town, you're like, where is the wine? Why are and we get doing this segment food. now? I feel like this is a tough sell well, today. I think that it's, it's actually a great time to have that conversation yeah. Yeah. because if you're aware of the mistakes that you're making and you only, and I hate to label them as mistakes because you can celebrate a holiday, eat more than Dr. usual Mike, and drink. Dr. Mike, if some family member of mind tells me that I'm eating too much on Thanksgiving exactly. Day. I'm stabbing them with the carving knife <laughs> in the hand. Well, is Cancer is the least of their worries. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm your worry. Look, yeah. it's not about making a change for one day. It's really the entire scope of things, understanding why you gain weight, understanding how many calories you're eating throughout the day. Yeah. Because I have patients come in and they say, doctor, you know, my meals are pretty small. I don't know why I'm gaining weight. And then further into the conversation, they're like, well, yeah, I'll have a few cupcakes at work in yeah. between my day. And catching those mistakes. No, but I mean, Dagan makes a really good point. There are certain cancers that are, are, are cancer because they, people get sick, yes. and it has nothing to do with any prevention. Yes. You know, lung cancer, pancreatic cancers, we're not where we are in breast cancer or somewhere yes. else. Right. Or ovarian. Ovarian as like, well. A lot of money has gone to some cancers for research and then not others, others that are deadly. For like ovarian cancer, there needs to be a huge fundraising effort on that. What's yeah. Having said that, if you do make changes in your life, obviously you can reverse sickness. Yes. We want to tell you this because obviously tomorrow's Thanksgiving. One of the reasons to be thankful this Thanksgiving is our health. According to Time Magazine, a little gratitude can go a long way for your personal health, by the way, Dr. Mike. It can make you more patient, improve your relationships, even help you sleep better. A good one for Thanksgiving. Researchers found gratitude can help you stop overeating as well. Isn't that funny? Being thankful can make you not eat so much. Thanksgiving, not eating so much. But here's what's interesting. Positive psychology research has come a long way in the last two, three decades. And what we found is, if you do something as simple as write a letter to someone in your life, it could be anybody, thanking them, and then read that letter aloud to them, for the next month, you will have a decrease in depression symptoms, a decrease in anxiety symptoms. And this is such a small thing that you can do because all you're doing is you're rewiring your brain. You're changing the neurotransmitters that affect depression, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. When you start thinking in a positive light and you become more thankful for little things in your life, 
it rewires everything. Your exercise pattern becomes better. You sleep better. Like we said earlier, your relationships improve. And it starts with making that mental change first. Gratitude all the way. Dr. Mike, thank you. Thank you so much. Good Appreciate to see that. you, sir. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes.